In the last video, we processed a positional flat file. In this video, we'll do the same process, except we will do a, a comma-separated value file. So here you can see that uh, the values are separated by commas. If I have more than one word between the commas, I put the uh, quotes around them. And that's pretty much it. So we'll go back here, and we will add a new item. Again, the item we pick will be the flat file schema wizard. So just to be consistent, last time we had flat file add customer positional. So this time we'll say flat file add customer um, or add cust CSV. And then this will also create an XSD file. We go through the wizard. The instance file, again, is the one I'm looking at right here. So I need to put star.csv and pick this one. The root, in this case, will be, basically I want it to be the same as this. And we don't want to count positions this time. So again, we highlight the row that we're, a sample, any, any one sample row. Click Next. And then this time, last time we clicked by we clicked by relative positions. This time we're going to click by delimiter positions. And then you pick your delimiters. First of all, the record being defined, the child delimiter is actually going to be the comma. And that is really hard to see right there. So I think you can actually just type in your comma, make sure it's not a period. And then we're going to continue. And you see, once again, it already parsed that line for you, and then it generated uh, these dummy element names over here. And so like last time, we can come here and change these. It doesn't ha hurt to have the same elements in different files, especially as long as it's not a root element. So this should be customer num, customer address. Customer city, customer state, and customer zip. We now continue. It confirms that. We say finish. And this is our schema that it built. And as we said before, there's a, we know it's a flat file schema because we can come over here and look and see the word flat file here and then also we see the flat file tab so you have the flat file tab whether it's a CSV or a positional type file and now you notice the word structure here so what it also did is if you click here you'll see something here called child delimiter and so we're on the root element and what that says is the children of the root will be separated by commas and then here you have the choice of infix, prefix, postfix, and a couple of new ones. What that basically means, if I could just illustrate, is if you had, for instance, comma, ABC, 1, 2, 3, Neil, that's called in, uh, prefix because every field begins with the delimiter. If you had ABC, 1, 2, 3, Neil, comma, that's called postfix because every field ends with the delimiter. If you have ABC, 1, 2, 3, Neil, that's called infix because the delimiter is only between the items. So it's defaulting here to infix. If you go back up here to the schema, I believe it also has a delimiter. And the delimiter I believe there would be like a carriage return line feed. Anyway, we won't go do that right now. And so we're done building this schema. And so we will need a pipeline for it. In the prior video, we built a pipeline here called BTP, Flat File Add Customer Receive Pipeline. And we probably should have put the word positional on there just to remind us. So let's actually rename that one now and put POS. And then we'll add a new pipeline, and this time we'll put CSV in it. So I'm going to say Add New Item. I'm going to pick pipeline receive and then the only difference here is I'm going to put here 
either DEL for delimited or CSV for comma separated values. And we already talked about what a pipeline is, so you can learn about that in the prior video. We go to the toolbox, get the flat file disassembler put here. We then go to the properties and you pick the schema. And this is the only difference in the two pipelines. So here we're going to pick the schema called CSV. And at that point we're ready to deploy. So let's do right click deploy solution. Watch it down here. I'm going to pause the video. And it deployed. Um, one of the projects I've been working on at work recently, by the way, had 34 projects in it. So when you did deploy, it sometimes took three to seven minutes. Um, this is only, of course, very small. It takes about five to ten seconds. Okay, so every time we deploy, what do we do? We go refresh or restart something. Okay, see so if you remember. We're going to go to host instances and we're going to restart the host instance. As soon as you do that, you can come over here and refresh. And let's review our receive locations here. So here we have a flat file positional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new I'm going to create two receive locations and put in the same receive port. First time we've done that. So before I do it, I want to change this receive location now. And I want to say only receive txt files. I'm assuming now if it's a txt file, it's going to be a flat file positional. And actually we renamed the pipeline, didn't we? Oh, we didn't rename the internal name. Okay, we renamed the BTP file name, but we didn't rename the, the .NET type, line, type name. So let me just show you how we do that. Go back to Visual Studio. And so when you rename a file, that doesn't change the, the guts inside the file. So here is uh, the type name. Actually, you think that should have done it. Type, type means the .NET class name, basically. And we see flat file add customer res oh that's the CSV. If we go down to positional, you see it didn't actually change and put the word positional there. So that means I'm going to have to deploy it again. Now this time I wouldn't actually have to restart the BizTalk host because I've not run any files since I restarted it. But I'll s uh oh we have a deploy problem. That's kind of unusual. So I'm going to sort over here by errors. Cannot update receive location. Ah, so what's happening here is our receive location has got this port kind of like coded into it. So what we need to do is temporarily put it on some other port and now deploy again. And now the deploy was successful. Okay, so now we go back here. Now we need to refresh this to get the correct list of pipelines. And here on the flat file, we're going to change now, and it's a little more clear that it says POS, positional. That's why I did that little extra work there. Now I'm going to make another receive location. And first of all, you have to tell what port it's going to tie to. So it's still going to be the flat file port. And just to keep the names similar here, we're going to put rloc new cust flat file CSV. And then we're going to pick flat file here. And we're going to use the same directory on the hard disk, which was this one. And But we're only going to receive files that match the CSV suffix. And now we're going to pick the pipeline, which should be CSV. And then we'll enable that. So now if you go back to your receive port here and look at receive locations, you'll now see there's two receive locations in the same port. They could actually be different files on the disk if you wanted. Um, and we'll talk about more why you would do this in the future. So now we're ready to test. 
So here's new customer file in, and over here I want to find the CSV file, which is this one. Okay, and I want to copy that over here. BizTalk has received it. We will go to hat, as usual, to track our message. And I see a start, but not a completed, so that means we have an error. And I think I know what it is. It's probably going to say no subscribers. And sure enough, right here,
Okay, I'm going to look at this again. Now, its children are not infix. They are actually postfix. So, remember we talked about how infix meant there were like commas between the fields? Well, there's only a carriage return line feed at the end of the fields, so that should be postfix. And I'm going to pause and deploy and run it again. I think you're probably tired of seeing that by now. Okay, so I haven't gone to hat yet, but now I see at 834, I have two output files, so I think we've got it now. Back to hat, run query, now we got it. So here we have 834, we received one CSV file, and we wrote out two XML files. So if we go back to our output directory here, open output file number one. It's uh, customer 101, Neil Walters, and I open the second file, let it refresh, and it's John Doe. And one thing you notice, it did actually pull in the double quotes. So it looks like we didn't have to put the double quotes. We probably should not have put the double quotes in our data file. So next time I run it, uh, we can actually take the quote. Oh, I remember why. Sometimes you put quotes here because what if you have a comma in the middle of your field? Um, we can test that later, but I think we've given the basic demonstration here of how to read in the file a CSV file and the prior video was a positional file and how we can send that file through BizTalk and have it translated from flat file to XML.